Hello, good Libra friends. Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. This will be a general tarot message for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. I welcome you to come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind. Um, I do suggest you only take away the messages that resonate with you, that speak to you, motivate, empower, inspire. Ideally, that's what I'm looking to do here today. Uh, if you're not feeling that way, give it time. Um, also, be open to the fact that it might not be your message this week. Sometimes, mes sometimes messages will come through that don't resonate. Uh, it won't be spot on every time in these general readings, but so is life, right? Um, you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Um, other than that, let's try and have some fun. Let's get you some helpful messages this week. Hello, beautiful Libras out there in YouTube land watching. Let's do it. What does Libra need to hear from the tarot this week? Libra. Justice. You're coming in strong. You're coming in hot. You may actually be kind of, um, I actually love this for you, Libra. You may be asserting yourself uh, in, in an area where you may have previously felt shy about it or struggling to make some sort of uh, decision or open the channels of communication. Um, you may have been afraid to sort of uh, cause waves or, or disrupt the status quo, but I almost see this as very like, you will not be silenced anymore. Um, but you're, you're biting back. And it doesn't have to be in an angry, vicious way. And I mean, knowing Libra, it wouldn't be anyway. You know, you, you would use your Libra charm anyway. Um, but yeah, you, you seem to be standing your ground this week. Yeah, all right, cool. And it may actually have to do with a, a mother figure, um, or you may be the mother, too, in this scenario. It, it could uh, possibly be with a romantic partner um, or, you know, husband-wife dynamics, whatever it is. I, I also see this really cute message, too, of whatever you believe in as a higher power, right? If you're a god person, a spirit, you know, universe, whatever you believe in, that's your business. I almost feel like you know you're being guided by something higher than yourself to move forward with this. It does make you a little bit uncomfortable, but I think you see the value in getting out of your comfort zone and, and saying what you need to say because it is just, because it is the right thing to do. I almost see this as a nod of like your spirit guide, you know, some form of it anyway in this picture, like looking looking down on you and like raising raising a glass in your name or, you know, a toast in your honor because maybe you did what you thought would be impossible. Um, and also, if this isn't so much aggressive in terms of, of conflict, I mean, I definitely get that sense for a lot of you. This may also just be moving forward with something that, that incited a lot of fear inside you. You know, maybe it, it goes back to more of a... Um, self-deprecating or, or not feeling deserving of something. You know, maybe you finally decided to apply to your dream job. Maybe you went on that interview, even though part of you was like, oh, I'll never get it. Whatever this is, you're doing it right. And it does involve striking out and doing something uh, atypical, doing something very untraditional. Maybe that goes against sort of, I don't want to say goes against your nature. It, it expands you out of your comfort zone, but you have to remember this is your card, right? The justice card. So you're showing up in your highest vibration here. So whatever this is, it's like you have many persons blessings to move forward. <clears throat> and I feel like I've gotten this message for you recently, or it may have been another Zodiac sign, but part of this, you may actually be saying something that I'm almost getting like the, the idea of the underdogs who aren't able or don't have the advantage of, of saying that or, or speaking that truth to the right person. <clears throat> it's almost like you're speaking on behalf of someone and it's like they're thanking you for doing it. And you may not even be aware of it at the time if you come forward and say something or um, I'm almost getting like the idea of a protest or a revolt or, or you, you stand up for something even if it is an unpopular, it's not, I'm sorry even if it makes you unpopular at, at the time, because you're moving forward with this idea of I have to do it because it's right, there's other people in your corner that haven't stepped up and let you know that they were feeling emotions cups the same way you did. Um, does that make sense to anyone? And it might not right now, that's what I mean. By you speaking up, it's like a domino effect. You start to see other people who are just like you, who are feeling those things and not saying them. Um, very cool, very, very much love this energy. I am getting a strong kind of Aries vibe to this, um, which is sort of uh, one of your polarities, you know, your opposite sign. So, you know, I don't have to tell you, Libra, it's all about balance, right? With those polarities, sometimes um, the signs opposite us can sort of trigger us or aggravate us in a way because those concepts or ideas are kind of foreign to who we are as, as a as people. Um, so for you, it might actually be that you've been overdoing the Libra, and so you're maybe uh, being encouraged to sort of dip into that 
uh, that independent uh, that independence that that streak of courage that sort of trailblazing energy of Aries Aries takes action right um, yeah, indecision is like a foreign concept to Aries because they act on impulse. And and so I'm not saying to go against the nature of who you are, but I am saying counterbalance where you may be overly leaning into, oh, I don't want to, you know, cause any waves. I don't want to upset the people or whatever. You, you gotta, you, you gotta cause a little bit of waves because um, that's obviously going to be the sort of... Um, Catalyst, thank you, spirit. <laughs> Initiator, catalyst of change. Let's see. What else do we need to know about... Tell me a little bit more about this Queen of Cups. You're going to be very proud of yourself, too, when you do this. I feel like... <sighs> Somebody else got a similar message. I don't remember who it is. <clears throat> yeah, something that once seemed impossible or out of out of the question or out of reach, you're able to do it. And this is what I mean. You find like-minded individuals who I really want to emphasize they have similar feelings. Um, it, it does have to do with like a deeper emotional sense of, of whatever it is that you're moving forward with or speaking the truth of or fighting for. Um, and, and so if this is a conflict within the home, again, the idea of they have similar feelings, but it's not being said, you may be addressing the elephant in the room, a long going issue or aggravation in a marriage or in a family dynamic. You may actually be bringing light to it through your very powerful and mighty words, right? You, in a sense, like these words can cut, but in a way that is going to open up the wound so we can actually address it and heal it. This is the cup of healing, the queen of cups, right? She's, she's the healer. She's the intuitive. Uh, she's the creative. She's the nurturer. She's the mother. <clears throat> yeah, this might be a parent-child dynamic um, that's coming through. It's a little bit... Um, I'm hearing like it's soaking wet. Like it, it needs to be freshened up. It needs to be wrung out or dried and put in the sunlight. Do you understand what I mean? Like metaphors. There's something that like it's cold and wet. That's not the type of, you know, you don't want to wrap yourself in a cold, wet blanket. That's You might be dealing with someone who actually has that sort of personality. It's like they've lost their zest and enthusiasm. And so <laughs> you're bringing a little bit of, all right, all right, enough enough of this like you know get off your high horse we need to talk about this i kind of like it i like it all right so then let's see the nine of wands and then the star this is such a it just looks so libra to me <laughs> i don't know why it just doesn't it gets the clothing and the beautiful fashion and it's just aesthetically pleasing right um it is a card related or connected with aquarian energy too um Aquarians are um, very important in terms of their linking of, of different parties and different people and societies. You know, if Leo is the heart, right, then Aquarius, their polar opposite, is sort of like the um, <clears throat> the veins that go throughout the body or um, the the channels, the systems which are able to reach and connect and link different people. That's sort of what I'm getting from this. So by, by you addressing an issue, you're going to find your tribe. You're going to find other people who are, who are struggling with this too. If it is a family dynamic, uh, you know, maybe that makes sense to some of you. Maybe it doesn't, but it's something about this, there's more to be revealed later where I, I sort of get someone coming to you and, and thanking you for being a mentor or for inspiring them to go do the thing that they were scared to do. Um, yeah, the stars are aligning. <clears throat> so then you have the nine of wands here. This looks very much like a baseball player to me. Is that significant to anyone? I, I don't think there's any other tarot card where I've ever seen a baseball player. So I'm, I'm wanting to call that out to you. I think that's important for some of you. Um, I don't know. Did someone play like college baseball or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some conflict ensued at a baseball game once. And that was like a very, you know, triggering memory for you. I don't know. I'm just mentioning it because for some of you, that, that's going to be a confirmation. Moving on. <laughs> so then we have nine of wands. This is moon in Sagittarius. So the moon talks about how we are able to nourish ourselves, what we need on like an instinctual, almost survival uh, level. Um, so when you have Sagittarius energy, Sagittarians need to travel, they need to grow, they need to expand, they need to explore, they need to um, feel enthusiasm and excitement. And they want to learn, right? They're sort of the, the preacher of the Zodiac related to like philosophies and religions and different systems of belief and ways of thinking. Um, so it's almost like mental travel in that sense. They need to have a wide variety of experiences. What's interesting about this card, though, is that in my opinion, in my interpretation of it, this person doesn't look like they're going out and living their best life, you know? They don't even have access to, you know, books, which is where they could get this knowledge or inspiration or 
feel like they're experiencing other things through other cultures, right? They're just kind of stuck here. Um, so with this card, I frequently say, I don't know if this is you or your person. I have a feeling this may actually be your person, but you know, take, take what resonates. This person, it's like they've given up on what they need for their own survival. They may be overly catering to the needs of others around them, whether it's their family or romantic prospects or their job specifically. It could be this person is a bit of a workaholic, but it's like they're burnt out because they're not fueling that, again, that innate need of what they need. <laughs> Sorry, the, the innate need of, you know, what what they desire, but what is going to make them feel recharged. That's very important. Um, by not honoring and respecting your moon sign, this person is stuck. <clears throat> anyway, so with this I say, who or what are you asking permission for and why? Uh, there, there's an independent streak to all of the fire signs. They don't typically love to take orders. They like to give orders, right? Um, so I, I don't know, I'm just sort of wanting to question here, like, if you're waiting for permission to, you know, take a lunch break or to go to the bathroom, you're not going to get it. There's almost like a, a, the longer you wait, you're, fi you're finally going to come to the realization like, oh, I guess I'm in charge. Like I have agency. I have authority in my own life. And yes, yes, you do. Um, you know, the nine of wands leads to the 10 and the 10 is like the wrapping up of a, a very long, enduring cycle. Um, it's not always the most like, it's an ending that is not the most uplifting in terms of woohoo, we can celebrate now. It's almost like we can sort of wipe away the sweat or the tears knowing that this has come to an ending. Um, and, and so it is liberating in that sense, but it does have to do with coming to the realization that more or less this person chose to stay in this role probably longer than they should have or chose to not change their behavior, even though their, their internal, you know, need was saying, oh, this doesn't feel good, this doesn't feel right. So maybe this is you. Maybe this is you blocking your own um, desires, blocking your own needs um, versus, you know, standing up and finally striking the chord or, or speaking the truth. Um, <clears throat> because th there is an element where <sighs> this person, I don't know who's who in this, you know, whatever. This person is, is giving the orders, right? But this person seems to be shaking in their boots, listening to the commands. But on the inside, they're like, this isn't what I want. This isn't who I am. How do, like, why am I like the person, you know, lower in rank when what this person is doing isn't, I don't know. It's like this person's giving orders and this person is taking them even though they know it's not right or it's not fair or it's not just, or it's just not in balance with who they are. That is changing. Um, <clears throat> after a period of reflection and pause, um, yeah, there's some, it's probably like an internal healing that occurs here too. Something about aligning with this person's heart. And, and it really does have to do with finding your tribe elsewhere too. As I said, when, <clears throat> when one person speaks up, there might be some sort of like domino effect where, yeah, you find people who, who were in a similar boat or a similar situation. Uh, you may join some sort of group or, or a, uh, committee, a, a council that sort of fights against whatever was going on here. Yeah, I know this is swinging like a little bit, you know, political or whatever, and I know that's not everyone's story, but even in the family, you know, the politics of the family, right, and who's in charge and who calls the shots, there's a, a much needed shift in a power dynamic here that I see coming. Um, and I, I'm going to reverse the message too. If you're sort of one of the, not peanut gallery, what is it, what is a word for it? If you're one of the one who is suffering in silence and you spot the person who, who's trying to address the elephant in the room and they're struggling, they're being shut down because of an unfair, unfair power dynamic, you should back this person up. You should not watch them struggle when you're feeling the exact same way. You may be being called to initiate action, to step up and be like, you know what? I agree with this person. They're right. What's going on isn't good and it does need to change and it's not working anymore. Um, because, because I can see this coming in, in two different ways. Um, but either way, there are parties that agree or are on the same side and believe in the same things and want to fight for the same things. What do you believe in? And and where have you been pushing that aside to, again, keep the peace? Uh, Sagittarius is very much about the belief system. Uh, but it can also be about, you know, the law, the heavy hand of the law. <laughs> Give me one more on this Aquarian energy. 
So I feel like this is like put down your hat and gloves. It's time to roll up your sleeves and do some dirty work, right? Like she's she's putting her glove in her fan, like, eh, you know, it it looked cute, like damn, I look good, but you know, this probably isn't the most um, practical costume or attire to wear if I'm gonna be out on the streets, you know, picketing. Um, yeah, it's it's like put down the little white gloves. Um, this is something that's it's getting at you to roll up your sleeves and um, yeah, get your hands dirty a little bit. And I know you guys are just like cringing hearing that. Um, but you know, the star says this is your destiny. This is what you are aspiring to be or to become. So, hey, no time like the present. We have a uh, eclipse season coming up, right? There's a full uh, lunar eclipse in Taurus. Um, so let's see, that is uh, not your opposite side, but it's sort of what we call quincunx. It's 150 degrees away, but um, it does maybe have a touch of that Aquarian energy to it um, because planet Uranus is sitting in Taurus. Uran Uranus is all about you know, shock, revolution, revolt. Um, and Taurus is a sign mutually ruled by Venus. So there might be some connection there about in terms of relationships or partnership or, or linking of people. It can be one-to-one -one relationships, but that's what I mean. It's expanding into something greater with this Aquarius card. It's not just a one-to-one. -one. It's like a, a group project or a um, a team, team collaboration. Anything else about this star card? What can I tell Libra? <clears throat> There's your ten of wands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You may have to upset the apple card a bit because <laughs> for some reason this can't go on. It's just not in alignment with who you are anymore, and it's it's not to look back and regret. Oh, I should have shouldn't have done it, or I should have gotten out sooner. Whatever this is for you, you know, you are in divine timing. You're exactly where you're meant to be. But if you're hearing the signs and the signals from the divine, or again something greater than yourself and you're not heeding the advice of, okay, I do need to take a stand, right? I do, I do need to confront, you know, the boogeyman in this situation, something that it scares me, but I, I know it's not right. Um, don't lean into your fear. You're giving this person too much power by putting them up on a pedestal or, or making them the monster. Um, power in numbers is very big here, for sure. If, if you want change, change will come. And and it may start with you having to um, go out on a limb, um, but that that's sort of the irony is that there's actually a whole tree that's supporting you. You just don't know it yet. It's, it's a matter of perspective and seeing who and what's around you. I actually really like that message. I hope you guys are digging it too. Um, but as, as I said, we have sort of kind of moon in Sagittarius, so our instinctual needs and wants and desires. Um, I would say very much anti or this, this is a card that it's like freedom seekers, someone who doesn't want to be penned in or closed in or assigned to a certain role or, or responsibility over and over and over again. It's like you've paid your dues, you've done this, so what's keeping you stuck? You know, this is very much tough love, but in a sense, it's you. Because there is a way out of this. It isn't like this is a dead end and you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life. Listen to your intuition, right? The moon is very much linked to this Cancerian energy, but the Queen of Cups is like the psychic, the intuitive, kind of like the high priestess. Your moon is your internal navigation system, your intuition. It's what's, it's what's going to guide you and help you kind of find your North Star to realign, to, you know, find that compass and see what direction it's pointing you in. The thing is, I think you already know. It, it's just, yeah, it's the message we started with. It's that decision, like, am I ready? Is this the moment? Is this the time where I just, you know, I, I untangle myself from all this bullshit and let it go? And you're right, it's going to cause some waves. It's going to cause some ripples, but... The tide will change, right? <laughs> I think that's important too with the moon. There's a fluctuation here. Um, but it will smooth itself out eventually, but it, it's going to take some sort of uh, profound change, some sort of powerful action and asserting one's belief and what is right and what is not right. Um, a lot of you may feel like you're, you're in an unhappy relationship where you've almost been put in the role of like the slave. Like you do all the work and then there's, there's no one there to help you. <clears throat> so you don't have to put up with that anymore. Are you sick of it? It kind of seems like you are. It seems like you dream of something else. There's almost a very like Cinderella uh, type uh, vibe to this where it's like, you know, you dream of going to the ball, but you're stuck, you know, scrubbing the steps and the palace or the palace, sorry, the palace or castle, whatever it's called, all day. It's like, when when do I get my chance to shine? 
it's right here. It's right here. So whenever you decide you're ready to. Um, but again, don't ask for permission because <clears throat> if we're going to go on this cheesy Cinderella metaphor that I actually love, you know, the wicked stepmother, maybe that's who that is, right? The wicked stepmother is not going to say, okay, you can go to the ball this time. Like we know that's, that's not going to happen. You got to, you got to make your way there on your own. You got to cut your own path, Libra. <laughs> I love it. Strength. Yeah. You are going to come out on the other end of this realizing just how much strength and tenacity and endurance you have. You know, what is, what do they say? Like, you know, speak your truth, even if your voice shakes, you're going to. Um, there's a side of you that is very sensitive and, and very delicate, um, but it's almost like that. Uh, you got to build the muscle memory. You have to work on that in order for it to grow and become, um, I mean, the word fortitude. Is, is that appropriate? I don't know why I'm hearing that. You have to make it strong. You have to make it lasting, enduring. Um, and it is about coming into your own. But you can still do it in, in your own Libra sweet way, right? I'm not saying you have to go out on the battlefield thirsty for blood because, I mean, again, you probably wouldn't do that anyway. It's probably not in your nature unless maybe you're like an Aries rising, you know, for all I know. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's something you can do it in a sweet and delicate way, but it's... <clears throat> I don't even know if that's a good way of phrasing it. <clears throat> I almost feel like there's something coming through about the illusion or the truth or, or, or pulling the veil back, pulling the curtain back to see who's actually there. Again, the Cinderella metaphor, right? When she goes to the ball, nobody recognizes her. There's there's a change in how you behave in a group dynamic that really catches people off guard because they may see you as sort of this person just, you know, shaking and trembling in the corner out of fear. That is far from the truth. That is not who you are. You're a powerhouse. I know it. You know it. It's time for the world to know it, right? All right, Libra, how am I doing for time? That one's that, or that one's good. Um, really quick, we'll we'll look at in terms of love and see if anything is good coming in for love for Libra. I love that message. Um, I, ho I hope that spoke to some of you. Pieces and parts of it anyway. I know probably not the whole story. It ends up veering off in some weird directions, I know, but I'm sort of just learning to embrace that that's how, that's how the tarot works, or that's how my guys sort of speak to me. So here we go. For Libra, anything in terms of love? Anything in terms of love? <clears throat> We'll do a real quick one, maybe like a three-card thing. What's coming in? The lovers, okay. Possibly something with a Gemini. Ooh. Helping someone through illness or, or a, a difficult time financially. <clears throat> you may sort of be uh, on the fence of if someone, especially someone may have asked to, you to lend them money or, or crash with you or some sort of favor that, I'm going to be honest, it kind of puts you out a little bit. You seem to be like, oh, gosh, do I do it or do I not? Um... Your generosity will come back to you tenfold, but this is a test, I can tell you. This is a test from the universe. When you were down on your luck and you needed someone to help you, where was this person? Were they there? Were they there? Were they supporting you? And I'm, I'm asking because I don't know. Were they the ones having your back? Would they do the same for you? If the answer is no, then that's your answer to this too. Um, and, and it's not about tit for tat, but, but please don't misunderstand. This is about honor and respecting yourself and, and not being overly catering to, to those around you who they really only had chaos and drama to your life. Um, and I am only saying that because if this is like an ex who you thought you had moved from, move on from, and then they come back into your life, but they come in a way needing a lot from you and requiring like a lot of this and a lot of that, I think it's saying you've moved on, like you're happier without them. Um, and up to you how you want to choose to deal with this, right? I, I'm never saying that you, you have to slam the door in someone's face. Again, there's always a, a polite way to do it. You know, if you don't want to burn the bridge, then don't burn the bridge. That's probably not in your nature. But, um, yeah, this is, this, there's something about reminiscing about the path. This is such, to me, a card of like reflection and thinking back to what we've already achieved and accomplished, you know, something we can sort of hang on our wall like a trophy, something we've accomplished. And then where are we moving in, into the future? If we're looking into the future and the future looks like this, I'm kind of like, hmm, maybe we should reassess what we learned, you know, the first time around and lean into the terms like that victory and what we learned and how good that feeling, that accomplishment, that achievement is. Um, again, this is a card of Mars, so it is that more kind of assertive, confident, courageous energy versus, oh, well, if I say the wrong thing, this person may be mad at me and I got to tiptoe around it. Like, that's not Mars. That's not Mars energy. That's fear. That's Saturn energy. The well, what happens if, you know, that's fear coming through. You know, rephrase it if you have to. It's like, you know, even if this happens, dot, 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 fill in the blank, because you have this on your side. Again, let your friends help you. Groups of people coming through, uh, supporting you in multiple messages this week. Um <clears throat> And, and definitely heads up with possibly a Gemini or a Taurus coming through. And, and 
I don't know. I don't mean to judge their character. It's just they're coming through in cards that I don't necessarily look at and feel dazzled by their energy. I'm a little bit like, oh, like we clearly have a mountain between us. What you know, what is going on here? This person may be rebounding or, or feeling sorry for themselves and just wanting that attention from you. Uh, give your time and attention to those who who equally will lift you up and support you. Don't go back to. I'm just gonna say it. Don't go back to old dirt bags. Sorry, like I, that's my Mars energy being very blunt and true forward you i don't love this vibe um now let's talk about this <clears throat> this seems very positive what else can i tell libra this might be saying turn around or look behind you in terms of uh, a a warm connection it may have not ever um evolved into a dating connection but there could be someone in your social circle who actually kind of has eyes for you it's going to be shocking there's going to be a revolution of, or a revelation i'm sorry of truth it could be with an Aries or a Scorpio. Yeah, especially Aries. I'm seeing that kind of strong. You have two Aries cards or, <clears throat> let's see, the tower. <clears throat> yeah, break free from old patterns of fear. You know, the tower keeps us stuck. It keeps us in, in this state of not growing, just again, repeating unhealthy or toxic behaviors or cycles with, or with people who sort of have that criteria or those those qualities rather. Ooh, okay, so this could be a new offer coming from um, a person who you know vaguely, or it could be you've met them once through a friend of a friend. There's some sort of uh, offer coming through that seems very tangible. It's probably new, though, in terms of uh, dating. Um, yeah, do you dare to, to venture into the unknown a little bit and, and give, this, give this new person a chance, see what they have to say? <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. This person is making their way towards you. They're they're making I'm hearing like great strides, great strides towards um towards asking you out. I think there's a little bit. This is very much Libra to me too. Venus energy, your ruling planet. There's a little bit of an intimidation factor here too. Um, so this person may sort of be dancing around asking you out, but they definitely enjoy speaking with you. They may be kind of ch be checking you out on social media. They're very impressed by how you present yourself. You know, yes, the beauty and aesthetic, but also underneath the layers of that. I, I think this person is very charmed by you. They think you're a very good person. So yeah, I don't know what this is, but whatever is coming through, these cards, love, love this. That seems to be very strong. These, not so much. So um, yeah, watch this person being emotionally manipulative too, like saying that one thing that they know is going to pull at your heartstrings to try and get your attention to them or get you back. I, I just don't love that. The Queen of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Sometimes I like the Queen of Cups. In this case, I don't. It, it's manipulative behavior. So invest in this. That would be that would be my advice or guidance to you, Libra. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.